announced. The first agreement is a MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding between EDB, Alexiev's Central Hydrofoil Design Bureau, MMS Morinus Agath, and Elcom Systems Private Limited for developing the transport logistics system, smart city, and intellectual monitoring system in the state of Andhra Pradesh. This MOU will be exchanged on the Russian side by Mr. Georgi Anstev, General Director, Modern Forms System, Agat JSC. May, may I request to step forward, sir? On the Indian side, this will be exchanged by Shri J. Krishna Kishore, CEO, Andhra Pradesh Economic Development Board. Thank you. The second agreement is a MOU between United Shipbuilding Corporation and the Council of Economic Cooperation of Andhra Pradesh on cooperation in shipbuilding, infrastructure projects, transfer of technologies, and training foreign specialists. This will be exchanged on the Russian side by Mr. Alexei Rakhmanov, President of the United Shipbuilding Corporation, and on the Indian side by Sri J. Krishna Kishore, CEO, Andhra Pradesh Economic Development Board. Thank you. The third MOU is between Rusin Form Export and the Ministry of Urban Development of India, Ministry of Home Affairs. National Building Construction Corporation Limited and the Government of Haryana on cooperation in development of smart cities in India with Russian IT solutions. Number four, MOU between Gazprom and Engineers India Limited on the joint study of gas pipeline to India and other areas of cooperation. On the Russian side, Mr. Alexei Miller, Chairman of Gazprom's Managing Committee. On the Indian side, Sri Sanjay Gupta, CMD EIL. Thank you. Excellencies, the next agreement is an announcement. It is an act, act of announcement in relation to the successful execution of documents between Rosneft a consortium of international invest investors and SR for the acquisition of SR oil refinery is related infrastructure and distribution assets. This agreement was reached between the following companies on the Russian side, Rosneft Oil Company, Trafigura PT Limited, UCP PE Investment Limited, VTB Bank, and on the Indian side, SR Energy Holdings Limited. The sixth Announcement is with respect to cooperation agreement in the area of education and training between Rosneft Oil Company and ONGC Videsh Limited. This will be exchanged on the Russian side by Mr. Il Sachin, CEO Rosneft, and on the Indian side by Sri Narendra K. Varma, MD OVL. May I request the CEO of Rosneft and the MD of OVL to please present themselves for the exchange of agreements. Thank you. The seventh announcement relates to signing of EBOU for setting up of investment fund between NIIF and RDIF. This will be exchanged on the Russian side by Mr. Kirill Dimitriv, CEO of Russian Direct Investment Fund, and on the Indian side by Sri Samir Khare, Joint Secretary, Department of Economic Affairs. Thank you, sir. The eighth 
announcement is signing of MOU for cooperation between Indian and Russian railways in increasing the speed of trains between Nagpur, Secunderabad, Hyderabad, and this will be exchanged on the Russian side by Mr. Oleg Belazarov, President of Russian Railways, on the Indian side by Sri Naveen Kumar Shukla, Advisor, Railway Board. Thank you, sir. The ninth announcement is the signing of the shareholders' agreement for establishing a joint venture to manufacture CAR 2260 helicopter in India. This will be exchanged on the Russian side by Mr. Anatoly Isakin, Director General of Rosobor Export, and Alexander Mikhev, CEO of Russian Helicopters, and on the Indian side by Sri T. Suvarna Raju, CMD Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Thank you, sirs. Thank you. Next is the MOU between ISRO and Ros Roscosmos on mutual allocation of ground measure measurement gathering stations for GLOSNAS and NAVIC. On the Russian side, this will be exchanged by Director General of the State Space Corporation, Roscosmos, Igor Komarov, and on the Indian side by Dr. A.S. Kiran Kumar, Chairman ISRO. Thank you, sirs. Next is MOU between Ministry of Economic Development of the Russian Federation and the Ministry of Commerce and Industry of the Republic of India on expansion of bilateral trade and economic cooperation. This will be exchanged on the Russian side by Mr. Alexei Ulyukyavev, Minister of Economic Development, and on the Indian side by our ambassador in Moscow, Ambassador Sri Pankaj Saran. Thank you, sir. Next is an MOU between Department of Science and Technology and FASO on the Russian side to be exchanged by Mr. Mikhail Kutyukov, head of the Federal Agency for Scientific Organizations, and on the Indian side by Ambassador Sri Pankaj Saran. Thank you. Next is the program of cooperation in oil and gas sector for the period 2017-18. This will be exchanged on the Russian side by the Russian Minister of Energy, Mr. Alexander Novak, and on the Indian side by Sri Dharmendra Pradhan, Minister of State for Petroleum and Natural Gas. Thank you, sirs. Next is the protocol for consultations between the Ministry of External Affairs and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russia for the period 2017-18. This will be exchanged on the Russian side by Mr. Igor Morgulov, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation, on the Indian side by Dr. S. Jayashankar, Foreign Secretary. Thank you, sir. Next is an agreement on cooperation in international information security to be exchanged on the Russian side by Mr. Igor Morgulov, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation, and on the Indian side by Ambassador Sri Pankaj Saran. Thank you. Next is signing of an intergovernmental agreement to purchase, construct four additional 1135.6 frigates through partnership between Russian and Indian shipyards. This will be exchanged on the Russian side by Mr. Alexander Forman, Director of the Federal Service for Military Technical Cooperation, and by Ambassador Pankaj Saran on the Indian side. Thank you. Next is the signing of an IGA for the procurement of S-400 air defense system. 
to be exchanged by Mr. Alexander Foreman, Director of the Federal Service of Military Technical Cooperation, and Ambassador Pankaj Saran. Thank you. There are two more announcements. Uh, the first is the roadmap of events to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between India and Russia in 2017. And the last announcement is the joint partnership uh, for global peace and stability. This will be released to the media. Excellencies, this concludes the exchange of agreement and announcement ceremony. We will now proceed to the next element of the program, which will take us to the Kudankulam nuclear power plant in Tamil Nadu. We will begin the proceedings by showing you a short film on the Kudankulam nuclear power plant, which stands testimony to the close cooperation between India and Russia. India and the Russian Federation are strategic partners. The cooperation between these two nations has been long and relentless. The Kodankolam nuclear power project in Tamil Nadu state of India is a testimony to the Indo-Russian cooperation and friendship. With the technical assistance from the Russian Federation, India built a pair of 1000 megawatt nuclear power reactors at the Kodankolam site. The Unit 1 of Kodankolam nuclear power project which is India's first 1,000 megawatt electricity unit, was dedicated to the Indo-Russian cooperation and friendship recently by Sri Narendra Modi, Honorable Prime Minister of India, and His Excellency Vladimir Putin, Honorable President of Russian Federation. Unit 2 became operational on 7 July 2016. The expansion of Kudankulam site is underway with two more units, three and four of 1,000 megawatt units at the same site. In addition, two more similar units are under consideration at the same site. The Kudankulam site is rising as a mega power hub in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now link with the Kudankulam nuclear power plant from where we are happy to report that the unit 2 of the plant has begun supplying electricity to the grid and further in the presence of the Honorable President of the Russian Federation and the Prime Minister of India, we will witness the laying of the foundation concrete for unit 3 and 4 of the power plant by CMD NPCIL and the President Atomstroy Export. Over to Kudan Kolan. Thank you, Kudan Kolam. I now invite the Honorable President of the Russian Federation and the Prime Minister of India to jointly unveil an e-plaque dedicating Unit 2 of the Kudan Kolam nuclear power plant to the friendship between our two great countries and to launch the project for Unit 3 and 4 of the nuclear power plant by pressing the button. <laughs> Excellencies, this brings us to the close of this ceremony. I now request the spokesperson of the Ministry of External Affairs to now conduct the proceedings. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we will now have press statements by the two leaders.
May I first invite the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, to deliver his press remarks. Your Excellency, President Vladimir Putin, distinguished members of the Russian and Indian delegations, members of the media, it gives me great pleasure to welcome President Putin, an old friend of India, here in Goa today. As they say in Russian, Stariya Drugluche Novik Duvak means an old friend is better than two new friends. Excellency, I am aware of your deep affection for India. Your personal attention has been a source of strength in our relationship. And in the complex and changing global context, your leadership has provided stability and substance to our strategic partnership. Ours is a truly privileged and unique relationship. Friends, since the last two annual summits, the journey of our partnership has been renewed, focus, and drive. President Putin and I have just concluded an extension of useful conversation on the entire spectrum of our engagement. The highly productive outcomes of our meeting clearly establish the special and privileged nature of our strategic partnership. They also lay the foundations for deeper defense and economic ties in years ahead. The agreements on manufacturing of Kamo two to sixty helicopters, constructions of frigates and acquisition and building of other defense platforms are in synergy with India's technology and security priority. They also help us in achieve the objectives of Make in India. We have also agreed to work on an annual military industrial conference that will allow stakeholders on both sides to institute and push collaboration. These projects are new chapters in a long history of strong and diverse defense partnership that both sides can take much pride in it. Just minutes ago, with dedication of Kodan Kulam 2 and laying of foundation concrete of Kodan Kulam 3 and 4, we saw the tangible results of India-Russia cooperation in the field of civil nuclear energy. And with proposed construction of another eight reactors, our wide-ranging cooperation in nuclear energy is set to bring rich dividends for both of us. It also fits in with our needs of energy security, access to high technology, and greater localization and manufacturing in India. Last year in Moscow, I had said that we would be enlarging our presence in Russia's hydrocarbon sector. In last four months alone, in a clear expression of our strong and deep engagement in the hydrocarbon sector, Indian companies 
have invested close to US dollars 5.5 billion in Russia's oil and gas sector. And with President Putin's support, we are ready to and willing to expand the scope of our engagement further. We are also undertaking a joint study of a gas pipeline route between our two countries, a combination of robust civil nuclear cooperation, LNG sourcing, partnership in the oil and gas sector, and engagement in renewable, renewables can construct a promising energy bridge between our two countries. Friends, with an eye on the future, we also agreed to set up a Science and Technology Commission. Through this, our societies will reap the benefits of joint development, transfer and sharing of cutting-edge technologies in different fields. And with the last summit, we also continue to expand, diversify, and deepen our economic engagement. Business and industry between our two countries is connected more deeply today. Trade and investment ties are on the upswing. And with President Putin's backing, we hope to fast track India's association with Eurasian Economic Union Free Trade Agreement. The Green Corridor and the International North-South Transport Corridor will serve to strengthen trade facilitation, logistical links, and ensure better connectivity between our two countries. Our efforts for early setting up of the investment fund of US dollars 1 billion between National Investment and Infrastructure Fund, NIIF, and Russia Direct Investment Fund, RDIF, will help advance our infrastructure partnership. We also want our economic linkages to connect the regions and states in both countries. Friends, the success of this summit shines a spotlight on the abiding strength of India-Russia strategic partnership. It also highlights our strong convergence of views and positions on pressing international and regional issues. Russia's clear stand on the need to combat terrorism mirrors of our own. We deeply appreciate Russia's understanding and support of our actions to fight cross-border terrorism that threatens our entire region. We both affirm the need for zero tolerance in dealing with terrorists and their supporters. President Putin and I noted the similarity of our views on the situation in Afghanistan and turmoil in West Asia. We also agreed to work closely to respond to the challenges posed by the unsettled nature of the global economic and financial markets. Our co close co collaboration at the United Nations, BRICS, East Asia Summit, G20, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, makes our partnership truly global, both in its scope and coverage. Excellency Putin, as we approach the 17th anniversary of the establishment of our diplomatic ties next year, India and Russia are celebrating and building on the achievements of our past. We are working to two models, a partnership that benefits, befits our common ambition and meets our shared goals 
for the 21st century. Our close friendship has given clear direction, fresh impulse, stronger momentum, and rich connect to our ties. In the emerging regional and global landscape, it has been a source of strength and substance, a driver of peace and a factor of stability. As one would say it in Russian, India e Russia Ruka Av Rukuva Svetloy Videshviya. India and Russia together to a bright future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. May I now invite His Excellency Mr. Vladimir Putin, President of the Russian Federation, to deliver his press remarks. Honorable Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, first and foremost, I would like to congratulate our friends with the second reactor unit of Kudankula nuclear power station reaching its full capacity and of course with the launching of the construction works in the third and the fourth reactor units of the nuclear power plant. Being built using the most modern Russian technologies with participation of our specialists, this nuclear power plant will be a very significant contribution to energy security of India and increasing of its energy efficiency. This nuclear power plant would also improve their access of the citizens and industry to reliable and secure electric power. Therefore, it will provide additional impetus to grow the national economy of India. Russia will continue to further comprehensively foster cooperation with our Indian colleagues in development of nuclear energy sector. We are working on the intergovernmental documents on the fifth and sixth reactor units of Kudankula. Overall, using the Russian technologies, more than 20 years span the lead, well, no less than 12 reactor units built in India. Our country is also a reliable supplier of hydrocarbons to the Indian market. Rosneft is going to export for 10 years of 100 million tons of oil. And Gazprom started the implementation of a long-term contract to supply 2.5 million tons of LNG per year. Over the first half of this year, Russia exported 2 million tons of coal. I'd like to highlight, we're going to expand our bilateral cooperation not only in energy sector, but also across the board. Russia and India are especially privileged strategic partners. Honorable Prime Minister Todd talked about the friendship between our countries over these past years. We are going to see this road further. Our countries are connected by long-standing relations. And each one has been next year, and it was already said, we are going to mark 70 years of diplomatic relations. During the negotiations with Prime Minister of India, person restricted than a delegation level talks with the participation of ministers and agencies and leadership of large companies. We talked negotiated in detail the current situation and the future of Indian-Russian cooperations. As the outcome, we have a joint declaration and a very impressive package of documents that we immediately have seen what was signed. Of course, special attention was given to the trade and investment sphere. We have noted with satisfaction that the bilateral trade is dominated by high added value products such as engineering and industrial processing. Unfortunately, of course, there were some negative trends due to volatility of prices and currency differences. We have agreed to improve our efforts to bring back the dynamic growth in our trade. We see great perspective in forming a free trade zone between Russia and 
between the Eurasian Economic Council and India. Experts and businesses support such an agreement. We hope that the decision to begin the negotiations will be made by the leadership of the Eurasian Council already in December in Moscow at the next meeting of the Eurasian Economic Council. We are going to improve bilateral investment ties with India. Over the past year, the accumulated mutual investments reached $12 billion, so we are really close to the 2025 target goal of investments, which is $15 billion. Intergovernmental Commission is working actively and the, session, the last session took place in New Delhi on the 13th of September. This commission has agreed upon 20 large investment projects in infrastructure, civil construction and innovation spheres. It will be financed by the fund which is being created today by the direct investments of Russia and the National Infrastructural Corporation of India, and my dear colleague has already mentioned that. The companies of both countries are improving the industrial cooperation. Russian enterprises are showing great interest to Indian initiative Make in India. There are negotiations going on about license production of civil aircraft, Sukhoi Superjet 100, as well as about joint development of regional passenger aircraft. Russian company, Russian Railroads, and United Shipbuilding Company, Roscosmos, are taking part in this work. Military and military technical cooperation is improving. Russia is not only supplying military equipment and ordnance, but also is opening joint production of the most modern, modern military equipment, for example, Su fighter jets, tanks, and anti-ship missiles, Brahmos. We have plans to have uh, in Indian production of multi-target helicopters K-2026 and frigates. By going to improve humanitarian ties, previous year there was a festival of Indian culture and this year vice versa. The corresponding agencies are going to prepare a large-scale program of cultural exchanges 2017-2018. There are a lot of different events, expos, concerts. A plan for the next year, which I have already said, will become the anniversary year for Russian-Indian relations. And, of course, we are very detailed in our dialogue on the international topics. Indian and Russian positions are quite close or coincide. One of the priority directions is fighting the terrorism. Thank you very much. I thank the two leaders for their statements. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the joint press briefing. Thank you all.